Uh, hello, you're welcome to my platform. I am Dr. Sandra Nabukalu and I am a surgeon. I hope you become aware and sensitized about the different surgical conditions. Today's video is about erythema indiratum. Erythema indiratum, by definition, is the inflammation that occurs within the blood vessels and the fat layer of the body, often leading to the death of the tissues within the fat layers, especially the cells, the fat cells within the fat layer of the body. Inflammation, by the way, is just a normal part of the body's response to fight off infection or cause healing after an injury. Usually the body produces some chemicals that trigger the cells of the immune system to fight off this infection or to cause healing after an injury. In erythema injuratum, the trigger is usually, in 50% of the time, it is usually due to an infection by Mycobacterium tuberculosis, the bacteria that causes TB tuberculosis. Although there are other triggers, other conditions that can occur in some patients that can trigger this inflammatory response by the body. But the commonly implicated trigger is the infection by Mycobacterium tuberculosis, the bacteria that causes TB. The reason why I wanted to discuss this condition with you is that it is a debilitating condition. It is chronic, it is recurrent, and it tends to cause a lot of pain in patients. And it also has disfiguring effects in these patients. And like I've told you, usually there is something underlying an infection or a condition that is underlying, that is causing this inflammatory response in the patients. And so it is very imperative that we usually find out the underlying cause of this inflammatory response that results to erythema indiratum. So what happens, for example, in a setting where you have a primary focus of infection, for example, in the lungs, in the kidneys, you can have the bacteria reaching the fat layers of the body via blood. And this elicits an immune response to wall off the infection. For example, the cells that are going to be recruited include the histiocytes, the macrophages, the plasma cells, the lymphocytes, eosinophils, and they'll come and wall off the infection forming some small swellings called nodules. The other thing that can happen is that we can have damage to the middle-sized arterioles, the small blood vessels that supply blood from the heart to the fat layer of the body. And this damage to these arterioles can cause a reduction in the amount of blood that reaches the fat layer of the body. And so the cells within the fat layer of the body, the fat cells are going to die off. The clinical presentation of erythema indiratum is that we are going to have nodules. And these nodules are usually within the fat layer of the body. And these nodules are going to be reddish. They will have some scales on top of them. And they are usually tender. When you touch them, they are painful. And they usually are between 1 to 2 centimeters in diameter. These nodules are going to evolve with time. They are going to become bigger sometimes, but eventually they ulcerate. They form an ulcer. And these ulcers can heal with time, forming depressed scars. But the bad thing about this condition is that the patient will look as though they have healed. But after some time, the condition recurs and the patient will get nodules which are reddish, scaly, they ulcerate and the cycle continues until we find out the underlying cause of this condition. If we don't find out the underlying cause of this condition, the patient is going to suffer for life. 
and they might die not because of the erythema indurum but because of the underlying cause which has to be investigated treated so that the patient can heal from this condition so it is usually an indication that there is a condition that is potentially life threatening that is presenting as lesions on the skin the erythema indurum which has to be investigated and managed there will also be swelling of the affected area the nerves within the affected area are also going to be damaged and so the patient is going to present with tingling sensations numbness pins and needles so please look out for those signs and symptoms the commonly affected sites in erythema indurum include the posterior one third that is the back of the leg although sometimes you can also find it on the lateral part of the leg and as time goes on it can also affect other areas of the body for example the chest the abdomen the buttocks the thighs you can also have it on the anterior aspect of the leg but the commonly affected part of the body is the posterior one third of the leg that is the lower one third of the back of the leg So please look out for lesions starting from that area. But of course if you don't treat this uh, this condition it can spread to all over the body. The individuals that are at risk of erythema indurum include the female gender especially those between 13 to 66 years of age. There are also other conditions that are closely associated with erythema indurum. These include rheumatoid arthritis superficial thrombophlebitis takayasu arteritis takayasu disease autoimmune disorders for example SLE also patients that have addison's disease hypothyroidism patients that have inflammatory bowel disease for example crohn's disease ulcerative colitis patients that have antiphospholipid antibody syndrome patients that have hepatitis for example hepatitis b and c and of course other bacterial infections for example nocardia fusarium chlamydia pneumonia also patients that have pseudomonas infection they can also present with erythema indurum that is why we have to always find out the underlying cause so it can be treated and this condition will just disappear There are also some drugs that are closely associated with this condition and these include intanacept, propyl thiouracil and chemotherapy. So if you have any lesions and you're on those medications it can actually be that you have erythema indurum. There are some unfortunate cases where we cannot find the underlying cause. and these are usually called idiopathic cases where we cannot find the underlying cause when it comes to the investigation of erythema indurum our main goal is to find out the underlying cause such that this underlying cause can be treated and the erythema indurum can disappear to emphasize erythema indurum is a debilitating condition the patients are going to suffer for a long period of time because the condition is chronic and recurrent the patient might heal for a given period of time but the condition will come back in the future and for this reason the patient is going to be in pain for life until the underlying cause has been established such that the appropriate treatment is initiated and the patient will suffer a lot of disfigurement and they are going to be non productive because this condition comes back after some time so please if you see any ulcers on your body especially the ulcers that start from the lower one part of the leg the back side please come to the hospital so we do some tests for example we do a skin biopsy looking out for the underlying cause we, we do tissue cultures pcr histopathology we also carry out other tests for example chest x-rays we do a cbc 
a peripheral blood film, hepatitis B and C tests. We do interferon gamma release assays. We can also do ESR, liver function tests, and a tuberculin test. When it comes to the treatment of erythema induratum, we usually split patients into categories. For example, we have the TB-associated erythema induratum. These patients heal better when we initiate anti-tuberculous agents. We can have a combination of rifampicin, isoniazid, pyrazinamide, and ethambutol, and the patients can take the four drugs for the first two months, and then they can continue with rifampicin and isoniazid for the next four months. That combination has, has shown very good results. The other combination can be rifampicin, isoniazid, and enthambuto. And these patients can be on this, this combination for nine months. That one has also shown very good results in eliminating the TB infection. And of course, a resolution of the erythema in duratum. When it comes to the non-TB associated erythema in duratum, the following drugs have also shown some very good results. For example, potassium iodide, dapsone, tetracycline, colchicine, clofazimine, and gold salts. Those drugs have shown great results when it comes to the non-tuberculous erythema induratum. We also recommend bed rest, leg elevation, and also compression stockings. They have also shown to work in combination with the drugs. And of course, this condition is associated with a lot of pain, so we also use analgesic painkillers, for example, the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. When it comes to the idiopathic erythema induratum, oh yeah, we have done all the investigations and we cannot point to the underlying cause. We usually use potassium iodide and it has also shown great results, especially when we cannot find the cause. When it comes to the prevention of erythema induratum, because 50% of the cases are due to TB, please limit the chances of you acquiring the TB infection. And this can be done by good ventilation of your places of residence, because the mycobacterium tuberculosis, the bacteria that causes TB, remains suspended in air for a long period of time without good ventilation. Please exercise good personal hygiene. Cover your mouth and nose when you're coughing, especially if you have tuberculosis, such that the people around you are not infected. Please always wear a mask as well. And also, if you have people that are having TB in your company or in your family, please make sure that you, you are always wearing a mask when you are around these people, such that you don't get the tuberculosis. We also recommend that please show up to the hospital on time. When you have any lesions on your body, please come to the hospital on time, such that we can investigate you and we find out the underlying cause of these lesions so that it can be treated and these lesions can disappear yes that is what i had for you thank you so much for listening to me please share my videos and also subscribe see you in my next video bye